give me a thumbs up that they can see uh, the live video, not the standby. We're still catching up on our, on our end. Okay, I can see myself. I think, I think we're good. I think we're, we're good. Um, well, we, those of you who missed the Discord, that was fun. We had a good conversation about learning, about enterprise use cases. Um, so we'll try that again after Mike's talk. But I'm super excited for Mike's talk. This is similar in vain of you know building um, software that can run on, on servers. Uh, but it's about languages. Uh, it's a particular one of the languages that they they work on at, at Fluence. Um, also, huge kudos to Mike for staying up. I think it's uh, four in the morning for him, maybe a little bit later at this point. Uh, but he wanted to give it live, so uh, so we really th we're appreciative of getting you in real time. So uh, extra special uh, warm welcome from Webbus and Lee SF. And I will let you take it from here. Uh, hi, guys. Thank you, Jonathan. So uh, my name is Mike, and I'm doing engineering for Fluence Labs. And today, I'm going to tell you about uh, our AquaStack. This AquaStack includes several things, uh, like Aqua language that uh, Jonathan like say about, uh, also special intermediate presentation that I will focus on, and also our runtime called Marine. Uh, and in particular, the agenda of my talk is as follows. So first of all, I will talk uh, a little bit about Fluence, what we are doing and how. Uh, then we, I will talk a lot about marine runtime and especially about concept of service. Uh, then I will talk a little bit about uh, our new language called Aquamarine or Aqua, just Aqua. And then we will talk uh, like really a lot about uh, Aquamarine intermediate representation and about how uh, like uh, the internals of Aquamarine intermediate representation interpreter looks like. During my talk, I will like dig into details of some like uh, on some site, and I will not cover some also a lot of things in our aqua stack. Uh, so please, if you have any questions or you like uh, don't understand uh, some moments, or you like have uh, any other thoughts about uh, this talk about our uh, language and so on, so please uh, uh, ask me questions or please write uh, my email. It will be on the uh, last slide. So uh, I think we uh, like uh, let's start with let's start with Fluence. So actually, Fluence is a um, the things that we call it open application platform. So this open application platform includes uh, several things. The first one is a peer-to-peer -peer stack. So peer-to-peer -peer stacks allows you to compose some APIs, uh, APIs of microservices, yes, data, and so on. And also, it's a way to, uh, like using some proprietary called stacks, DNS, and so on. And also, open, open application platform is a hosting marketplace uh, with uh, monetization. By monetization, here I mean that so actually monetization like isn't implemented now, uh, but it's uh, like in the future and our future plans. Uh, and it's uh, like in future we hope that uh, developers. You'll be get paid by the fact that their modules or services uh, like are used by anyone in the previous network. And um, uh, like it's uh, also called a license based, uh, licensing based uh, paid. Uh, and like to allow all of this, yes, there is a special language uh, called Aqua. Yes, this language is inspired by Picalculus. Uh, actually, it isn't based directly on Picalculus, but uh, many things in, internally inspired by, by it, and also by session times, maybe, maybe called uh, such great calculus. And um, so Aqua internally is just uh, like a medium that uh, allow you to coordinate an orchestrate network uh, that uh, consists of several uh, peers with services. For example, on the right uh, side of the, of the slide, you could see like a simple scheme with two clients. One so clients here, here, and uh, all, on all other slides is just a browser. Yes, it's just a client uh, like uh, that works inside browser. Here you can see two clients: one Firefox, next one is the Chrome. And imagine that uh, like guy from Firefox want to send some data to like guy or guy on Chrome. And um, uh, with this data, he want to 
do, I don't know, he want to compose some services, he want to call some uh, some services or some like uh, combine some data and so on. And service actually is a, like is a, one of the most important concept inside uh, our fluence. And this concept uh, is um, important for as a part of the stock. And uh, let's uh, uh, consider it in more details. So actually <coughs> service here is a uh, WebAssembly based like code. Yes, so, so sorry, it's a code compiled to WebAssembly. That's why it's sandboxed. And also this uh, service is composable with Aqua. Yes, I mean that uh, Aqua could call service uh i i will show later how it should be uh and also we are using WebAssembly interface types uh, to make our service more user friendly I, I mean api of service more user friendly also services could be stateful or stateless for example they could have states in memory or they could access file system databases through wasi and also they could be extendable uh, with some external executables. Uh, for example, here you can see that like on, on the service, there is a, some uh, external, uh, the service like written on Rust, and for example, for example, written on Rust and compiled to WebAssembly uh, could call with a special uh, feature uh, that I will show you later. Uh, other services, for example, IPFS or like, I don't know, some database like MongoDB or something like this. Uh, so, and let's dig into services more uh, in more details. An example of marine runtime. Probably you like uh, have seen my previous talks about uh, things called FC, and uh, actually marine and FC is the same thing, uh, are the same thing, but uh, like we renamed FC just several days ago. Uh, so, like uh, that's why I will call FC next uh, marine, and. Uh, uh, on the slide, you could see how Fluence could be considered from a uh, like service-oriented point of view. Uh, there are several special terms on the slide. Um, so the most uh, important one is a module. Yeah, so module is a WebAssembly module. So with this, with this code written on Rust, C++, assembly script, and compiled uh, to WebAssembly with our special API. Uh, and uh, several modules could be combined to entity code service. And uh, uh, in, in this turn, several services could be combined to entity code backend or like, um, uh, I don't know, like a, a super service. And uh, here functions means that function written on Aqua, on our special language. And it's important that this function could compose any services that form the backend. Uh, and it's also important that each service could could be located on different peers inside Fluence network. And also, for example, they could, of course, be on the one peer uh, inside Marine uh, runtime. And for users, they uh, like uh, could be considered as a like just a function from um, from just function as a service. Um, so here, function is a like a letter F from fast. Uh, and uh, so, as I already said, <laughs> uh, so service is a group of modules, and they link together by shared and linking scheme with help of interface types. So I think you like you know uh, a lot about WebAssembly internals, and here like uh, you know that each modules uh, inside WebAssembly could have uh, their own imports and their own exports, and uh, interface types allows you to do shared and linking scheme. Uh, this linking scheme um, allows modules to keep their state in private. Uh, by their state, I mean memory, table, globals, and so on. And just to link uh, with each other by imports and exports. So uh, here you could see that uh, like two imaginable, mo or three imaginable modules linked together by uh, like uh, linking corresponding imports and exports. Um, on the slide, you could see example of uh, Hello World uh, written for Fluence. Uh, so it's it's about six lines of code. Uh, it shares the same scheme as the Wasm engine. So here you can see one function called greeting. 
Yes, this function is wrapped by the procedure marker code FCE. <laughs> yeah, this FCE uh, works uh, similar to Wasm engine macro. And here is the important thing that uh, you could uh, operate by vanilla Rust types, yes, by strings, vectors, uh, records, by records I mean strings, or sorry, structures, and so on. Um, also, here we could see more complex example. So this is a service that like complete uh, code could be found by the thing. This service consists of three modules. Uh, so this service intended to, so it's like a test service or like a model service. Uh, it's intended just to like download uh, by providing URL <clears throat> some, like I don't know, some bytes, uh, yes, by just uh, running curl and then save these bytes to some file name. So here we could see the main function for this main module is called site storage. And this function takes a URL and file name and internally this uh, module code to other modules, code curl and local storage. And uh, like from code point of view, from Rust code code of point of view, it looks uh, similar to FFI. Yes, you need uh, to do like you need to define foreign section. Yes, wrap it with FC <laughs> and um, all the same. Yes, and here inside uh, the section you could use when you are types with several restrictions. Uh, I will maybe so I won't uh, tell a lot about this restriction, but uh, if you want uh, more details, please ask questions. Uh, and let's see more and more complex example. Here you can see that uh, FC could be applied to a structure, as the structure contains some non-trivial types, like vectors of vectors of bytes. And here you can see that this uh, then this structure could be used inside a uh, foreign block. Yes, and here you can see that like it's a vector of vector and so on, of uh, reference to this like uh, the structure. Uh, so well, the rules uh, are the same, but so as far as I know, Wasm engine uh, doesn't allow to uh, like use some uh, internal vectors inside the vectors. Um, also, like it's important thing because we use share and nothing linking scheme. Uh, so reference here means that uh, like mm, uh, so here reference. Uh, is meaningful because uh, it uh, allows you not to copy types uh, by calling some wrapping function. But for example, imagine that the uh, reference inside export functions, it means nothing uh, in terms of uh, like uh, memory because copying would be done in any cases because it's shared nothing linking scheme and we don't have now shared memory between modules. So each module keeps their memory, memory in private. But like it allows you to, um, for example, port easily some already exist, existed software, existed code, just applying FC macro uh, to the like some function that you want to be, want to make uh, export or imports or import. Uh, and complete example of this uh, like test. So actually this tests, uh, our tests, you could find by the sync. Uh, so there are more examples of more complex functions. Uh, and uh, let's dig <laughs> more into details about uh, modules and about services. So actually we have three types of modules. Let's start with the last one with effector types. So effector types, uh, like uh, types of modules that could access file system through Wazi. Also they, they could call external binaries. The reason why we have for such like such effectors modules and such scheme with three types of modules that effectors is a module that could corrupt your like state. And you want to allow developers to, not developers to like, uh, let's call miners, yes, people who could run freelance nodes inside our PPP network just to run safely, uh, safely services by like uh, uh, make some like register of good effector modules and uh, that identifies by hashes. So it's uh, like the same thing as the Apple store or uh, Google store or something like this. 
So let's say factor module that that one that should uh, uh, be reviewed by someone uh, for doing some malicious uh, like uh, things with your parse file system or some your state. Uh, the next type is the pure modules. <laughs> so it's like, uh, uh, is, it, is it written? Yes, it's like from functional programming. Uh, it's like the module that can't uh, access file system or they could access only through effector modules. They could call effector modules and like do only things that they could do. And the last one is a facade. So facade modules uh, expose like API of entire service uh, and this facade modules could be called from AquaScript. Yes, and each service could uh, have only one facade module. Uh, and also each service is identified by a special service configuration file. You could see example of uh, uh, like uh, already uh, seen example of URL downloader. It consists uh, of three modules. And here you can see that each module could have their own settings. For example, you could adjust like WASI settings for modules, saying that oh, this modules called the local storage could call sorry could uh, access only files listed in this uh, pre-open files list. Uh, and for example, this one Kuro adapter could uh, call some external binary called Kuro by this like by this path. Actually, now we are using CUI interface. Uh, and future when WASI will support the Unix uh, socket or socket uh, with uh, like support of Unix socket will also support Unix sockets. Uh, and uh, so this modules will be loaded by Marine one by one uh, in the sequentially, like like they like uh, are defined in this uh, configuration file in, in the sequence. And the last one will be came for state one, for state module. Uh, and marine runtime could be considered like uh, this scheme, yes. So this marine runtime allows you to load several service, services simultaneously. And in its turn, each service uh, consists uh, of se several modules, could consist of several modules. And effector modules, yes, could uh, access file system or like uh, call external binaries, so wise. Uh, and internally, these modules communicate with each other with help of interface types. And services can't call uh, each other, they are isolated uh, from each other, they have separated memory and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, it's important that uh, our ear interpreter, that's why I'm, I'm talking uh, about interpret this interpreter on WebAssembly and Meetup. This interpreter written on Rust and it's also compiled to WebAssembly. Uh, and it's also compiled to a module that could be loaded inside Marine, inside our runtime. And uh, this, but this module has some uh, important feature uh, comparing to other services or other modules inside Marine. It could call other services. So it has ability to call other services by special uh, host closure. Um, so let's stick. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Aqua. So just like to have uh, some thoughts what how it's like looks like, and I think that uh, it's better to review several examples. Uh, we have more or less complex example of Fluent Path. So it's like uh, some form of messaging app you can find uh, by this link, and here you can see example of uh, Aqua Script. That's uh, like our language. Uh, we don't we don't sorry we don't have now a highlighting scheme uh, for this uh, language so that's, that's why just a gist uh, like like yes uh, just the text so here you can see function uh, that allow you to handle user joining so imagine that like we we, we want to write uh, like uh, some messenger yes and we want to ha handle uh, like when some user is joined inside our uh, our P2P messenger. Yes, it's not a like centralized, a decentralized messenger. Uh, and here, like to uh, imagine that we have several services inside this application. And uh, so this application is identified by special app config. And from this app config, we could find services called user list. So it maintains uh, user list. So like, 
a list of users. Internally, it consists of SQLite that compiled to WebAssembly. Uh, also, it was to be said that we have Redis compiled to WebAssembly that also could be could be as module inside FC. This could be composed to uh, so services could consist of like database, not only not not as a separate database, yes, but it's like also compiled to WebAssembly. But uh, let's return back to our script. <laughs> uh, here on the third string, you could see that uh, that like operator on, so like on some uh, something, we could do this one. So it's like Python-like or I did, uh, so I did, I, I did tensions here are matters. And here it means that, uh, so uh, here, please run these two lines on peer ID identified by this uh, string, yes. So it means that execution fall will be transferred to this uh, peer identified by this peer ID. And on this peer ID, you function join will be called. Uh, here, this this line, this first line is a, uh, is a alias. Yes, just uh, like alias uh, to service ID, this ID, uh, service ID of user list. And uh, uh, this simple function will return join result. So the join result, result looks like this. Actually now uh, in interface types and in uh, our SDK for us, we uh, don't support uh, enum types. We don't, and uh, that's why we don't support result. And uh, so some form of I, either types, yes. And uh, <laughs> We now uh, we have a workaround, yes. So we just linearize this either type to this form, and we have some return code, yes, and error message otherwise. Uh, like but in future, in some like in some point, uh, we will uh, support, of course, enum types and box types, but not now. So uh, here you can see more complex function that uh, operates on two services. So, uh, so this uh, code intended to handle posting messages. This message is just a string. Yes, and it's return some some result. It also linearized either type. Uh, and internally, it it do it does uh, two things. First one, it called uh, history service and adds some entry to the history service. And also then it notifies all users. So here you can see like four cycle in parallel. So it notifies all user like uh, in parallel. I uh, I describe way later what does it mean in parallel. And uh, it will like uh, call special callback, this callback inside browser uh, that uh, like prints this message on the clients. Yes, and here we just um uh com so th this comparison is needed just to not uh, like to show this message on our client not to duplicate it and here you can see that uh, next operator via yes it that allow you to like uh move execution to pure id that uh for example connected via some relay id to our network so because like client uh, could be like could like, uh, could not have uh, some white IP, yes, and it could be like it can be um, called directly from network. So that's why uh, every like client is identified by relay ID. Uh, also, we have some form of authentication, but I won't cover this in my talk. If you want to, uh, uh, if you want more details, please ask additionally. Uh, so, and uh, one last point about Aqua. So it's like it's intuition why it's needed and why like uh, uh, how it so like, could help applications. Imagine that we want to do some complex network scenario when we want to go to some gateway and uh, we want to like compose two services and one service contains database and uh, in traditional client server workflow uh, it's uh, we look like this. So we call gateway, gateway will like call ser server, server will fetch data from database, and then return back in response to gateway. And then gateway will request uh, another server, 
and so on. So you could see that there are some additional round trips, for example, this one and this one. Yes, or sorry, this one. And uh, like in peer to peer networks, this scenario could be flattened. It could be in, like in this form. So you can see that this is as, as optimal as is possible uh, in terms of round trips, in terms of network calls. And uh, with uh, Aqua, it could be uh, uh, it could be like uh, represented in Poland. Like yes, here you can see just some sequential operators that uh, allows you to transfer execution to gateway server database and another server sequentially, and then return result from the last server. Um, and the uh, last slide from this group about Aqua. Uh, actually, we use different technologies for different part of our language stack. Uh, so the first one, the first thing is the Aqua compiler. It's written on Scala, in functional way, <laughs> uh, and it compiles our uh, like Aqua code. For example, uh, this one, yes, it compiles to in our intermediate representation. It will talk <laughs> next slides. Uh, and then this intermediate representation will be executed inside Marine runtime. Yes, it allows you to execute WebAssembly modules uh, executed by uh, ear interpreter written on Rust and compiled to WebAssembly and loaded inside Marine. Uh, so that's how it looks like. So let's move on to Marine intermediate representation and the foundation of it. So actually, as I already said, it's based on calculus. And I uh, don't like cover all details of P calculus, but I just want uh, just I add the slide to uh, show you some intuition behind uh, behind several instructions that we have inside here. So the most important thing here is the uh, combinators. So here you can see three combinators. The first one is uh, so-called sequential combinators. It means that so first of all execute P, and if it succeeded then only then execute Q. This one, third one, yes, is code parallel. It means that please execute P and Q in parallel and then like do something with results. Here plus means that uh, please execute uh, like uh, it's with joint behavior. I also <laughs> won't cover joint behavior. What is it? Uh, please ask questions. Uh, next. Important things is match and mismatch. So here it's just allow you to branching inside uh, like the calculus yes, and just uh, compare some values comes from. So here is called process, yes. But by process, so because the calculus invented in uh, 1980, as far as I remember, and the uh, process here could be anything. So it's like, a, I don't know, is a, like a process as a operation system process or like a uh, another client or something like this. So like uh, it's the same thing as a message application uh, is a could cover many many situations inside computer science because uh, all like communication is uh, could be considered as a sending messages. Uh, okay, so and air uh, consists of like eight uh, instructions. Uh, here you can see all of them. So first of all, first one and the most important one is a call. Yeah, that allow you to call services, call facade modules of services. Next two allow you to sequentially call uh, or parallel call. It's like maps directly to this one. Uh, this one fold. It's uh, is like a full like. It's allow you to iterate through some value. And uh, for example, remember cases when uh, like. Uh, when you want to post message and you need to uh, go through several uh, clients and this like this fault allows to do it. This XOR allows you to catch in errors. Uh, I will like go, I will talk a lot about semantic lately, but it's now uh, on your I, a brief review of it. Next two is match and mismatch. I think they all do. They just like transfer execution if it, uh, if values matched and mismatched. Uh, and now is empty instructions that <coughs> allow you to like uh, gener generate code. Uh, and inside, like, uh, say, generator, you need to 
uh, generate some instruction that uh, does nothing. So on this instruction code now, exactly in this P, P calculus. So let's uh, let's see what each instruction do internally and start this call. So call is the most important instruction and it's one of the most complex. Uh, here semantic is also complex. Uh, so call allow you to call uh, some service on peer ID identified by this uh, like peer ID so the first argument of call and then call service identified by the string and function like uh, so identified by this like third parameter and call this like function of service located on peer ID by this argument and uh, set the result to some value is it uh, that uh, here is the last one uh, next one is a siku yes siku allow you to so it takes two instructions they could be uh, not only call yes it could be uh, like uh, several instructions that could be another siku siku and so on so i call it uh, we call it subgraph or subtree um, and uh, so sequentially allow, allows so uh, uh, say this interpreter to uh, call to execute these instructions sequentially. What what does it mean sequentially? I will cover later. In parallel, <laughs> we'll see more thing, but in parallel, uh, parallel is a complex thing, uh, and it's not it's not means that you need to execute on one peer in parallel, like in multi threading, all uh, execute in one thread, but uh, in terms of network, it called in parallel. Uh, XOR1 also takes two instructions and uh, it executes the first one, its first subgraph or first subtree. Yes. Uh, and if some instruction inside this subtree failed, and only uh, in this case, it called next subtree. So I will call this first one left subtree and uh, next one uh, right subtree. And yes, it's like first instruction, first, oh, sorry, left subtree fails. Then only then it will call a uh, right subtree. Uh, last one is a fault is also complex instruction. It takes uh, iterable is yes, it's like an array that it's iterates on. Then it's uh, uh, I think it's really to some iterator. Yes, and then you could call you could use this iterator inside uh, inside subtree. This subtree, I mean, this also instruction is also subtree. Um, so here you could see example of how like a uh, complex scheme, could, sorry, complex uh, script could look like. Uh, here you could see like fault is that call sequentially uh, some. Um, so this this one is uh, like iterator, so it's like array like uh, structure, and uh, here is iterator. This is iterator. Could be also we support uh, uh, JSON pass. So this one is JSON pass. And from this value, we, for example, it looks like this. Yes, it's like users is a race of some objects in terms of JSON. Yes, a JSON object that have, for example, peer ID field. And here we could uh, obtain this peer ID field by uh, this JSON pass and call uh, and, and use this, uh, this like. Uh, obtained value as a first instruction of call. Uh, and this one next that <laughs> won't cover it on the side with all instructions is uh, like another one, yes, ninth one, if it could be say, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, so it's bring, so it's like it rates through users and uh, set it rater to next value. And this next could be placed anywhere inside fold. For example, if it could be placed here, this fold is a left fold. It's like moved value from, uh, sorry, handle value from left to right. If it would be here as, as a first, so imagine that here first next and like second one, so right up to easy call. And in this case, this fold became a air fold. Yes, uh, like from, I don't know, from Scala or other functional languages and it will uh, start from very end of the array and uh, handle elements from right to left. 
Uh, okay, <laughs> and house construction is a very simple one, is a no. So it uh, like uh, doesn't take any arguments, it's just a null. Uh, so it does nothing. It really does nothing. Mm, okay, <laughs> and the last thing that uh, is important for our uh, network is a particle. So a particle is a uh, is a some form of data. So it's uh, a particle is a piece of data that transfer between peers. For example, if we consider this uh, um, the script, you could see that uh, here are several calls. And each call change data. I will like cover data later. What is data is? But data is like a execution sequence or state of interpreter. And it's like call several nodes. And uh, when each node is called, the execution transfer to this node to this pure ID is identified by, by this variable. And all set of data set data before you would transfer to this node. Uh, in form of particle. So particle contains script uh, data and uh, some other metadata that needed for a node. Uh, but for interpreter, it's much more that uh, particle consists of script data and uh, init peer ID. Init peer ID is a, a peer ID of client who initiates the, uh, the script. Uh, so let's consider the last section is <laughs> implementation of uh, interpreter and uh, also remember the general scheme here like you see is a marine <laughs> yes and it's like uh, all all stack looks like this yes we have peers that run services inside web assembly with help of interface types and execution flow transfers from one peers to other with help of aqua stack yes it is uh, so aqua aqua plus uh, aqua marine intermediate representation. So it's like it's uh, um, a layer of hierography or network management. Yes, and this one is layer of execution inside of C. Uh, so from some formal point of view, you know, or like math point of view, so our interpreter could be considered as a state transition function. So it's like a, uh, state machine. Yes, it in its take uh, data from particles that comes to node. And it's also preview previous data if it if it was on node. Yes, for for example, particle could um, I mean particle is like particle for one uh, script. It could come to one node several times. And uh, like from previous times uh, there there would be a pre previous data. And uh, like data from new, uh, like uh, like the new coming case and the from previous coming come from our interpreter. And our interpreter produce uh, two things. First thing is a new data that would became brief data on the next uh, round. And a list of peers or a list of peer uh, IDs or public keys that uh, this new data should be sent. So it's like, it's uh, very simple. So it's like a black box uh, that produce you a data that you need to send to peers from this list. And it's like all inside of assembly. But this interpreter isn't a pure function. So because internally it calls services located on uh, on node or and some built-in functions. So built-in functions allow you to discover some peers, so we solve topology and so on. Uh, we have like in the documentations uh, about this built-in function. So they, they are not services inside WebAssembly, but they special function inside our node. And they mostly intended for some network management. Uh, and uh, here you could see <laughs> how it looks like from Rust and you know, from how it could be, how it's implemented. So like uh, this, like um, this function invoke is also run by FC. So, here I need to um, I need to say some additional information. Actually, we run uh, interpreter both server side, both inside our node, and both in client in browser. And we have two building targets. One, uh, so 
this invoke function is the same for these build targets, but on for clients, it's wrapped by Wasm engine. Yes, and for server side, it's uh, wrapped by FC, but internally it's almost the same, except for this moment. And uh, uh, this like this invoke function uh, receives uh, init ID from particle aqua script, previous data, and like data that I will call current data, and produce new data. Uh, and uh, like because we don't have the support result as a, like either types, uh, the return structures looks like this. Yes, it will. Uh, so the important field here is a new data. This one, this is it. New data, and the new like it's like list of peer IDs or public keys of peer IDs that uh, uh, data should be sent. This new data uh, inside interpreter we have two we have values that could be two types first type is a very uh simple with the scalar values actually inside the interpreter now all values uh, except streams uh, are json like uh, so it's like it's from there because we now like in, uh, on prototype we decided to use json in the future we would switch to interface types and all values would be key. I would become uh, interface types like. I mean that there would be seamless integration with Marine, but now it's JSON, uh, and uh, uh, they are fully fully consistent. Uh, I mean that they are not three D like. They are the same on each peer, uh, and they could be uh, like arguments of any instructions that like any of eight instructions, match, call, and so on. Streams are much uh, like harder to understand. They are CRDT like, but here by CRDT like here mean that they could be differ on different peers, but they have a, a property that they append only, and the, the beginning of so that the left side of the stream uh, always the same for one peer. That's why they so they are like functional data type. They have versions. Uh, they like <coughs> they could be clinicalized by clinicalization. Here I mean that they could be. Uh, um, I think that it could be say that it could be uh, switched to scalar values. So it means that uh, Aqua could could say so now on this like. Uh, this stream could be fixed on some peer. So the state that differs in different peer, but we want to fix it on this peer and uh, say like, and uh, label some something, uh, some, somehow, sorry. Uh, and uh, without communication, it could be used only inside fault, only by like iterable fault. And in the moment, uh, it's only partially implemented. And now streams, uh, not CRDT like they could be different on different execution, but it's very hard to obtain the situation. We are working to make it CRDT like uh, in this like in this following way. And from code point of view, they look like this. They uh, prefix it with a dollar sign, uh, and uh, you so uh, the difference here is that you could add to end of the stream some values because uh, to scalar, scalar values could be assigned only once then you can skip the execution. Uh, so how interpreter works internally? Actually, it treats instruction as a, as a graph, as I already said. For example, imagine this simple script with three instructions and actually is a, is a graph. Yes, but it's uh, it could be said that actually is a tree because like fault could be uh, so this, like you could see how code could be represented as a graph, and fold here also. Here you could see that next here is a cycle, yes, because next uh, call fold again, and also it's important that there could be several next inside one fold. But actually, you could say that uh, uh, this one could be like I don't know. Um, could be replaced by like all nodes inside uh, inside this like fold uh, fold tree. Uh, okay, and uh, 
from code point of view, it looks like a visitor pattern. This is a cafeteria executable instruction that are implemented for all instructions. And they like uh, have, I have two uh, contexts, execution context and trace context. Uh, so, uh, and the other important thing that it's um, like, we do not have any entry point, any, so, Entry point is always the same, is the, is the root of, of graph, call graph. And each time execution starts from the very beginning of script. And uh, to not, so this one um, is needed to check proofs of that the previous uh, instruction was called, really called. Because now we don't have such uh, a feature, but in future, each node would uh, sign uh, like the result that they placed inside data. I mean, the interpreter inside node will sign by pure ID public key, uh, sorry, by private key. Uh, you'll sign uh, the result, and uh, before execution, each node would uh, check these results. Um, and uh, like to also, it's you not don't want to execute uh, same calls several times, and to avoid this, we. Uh, invented like algorithm of linearization of this tree. And uh, so data that like was like current data, previous data and uh, new data actually is just uh, this one is the execution trace that consists of well, just a arrays of uh, executed states that in each executed state is a, is a enum, yes, with three instructions part call and hold. And here you can see that uh, how it looks like for call and par. So par here is just the two values and size of left subgraph and right subgraph. Uh, right needed, I will show you later. Uh, so that way, like during execution of instruction, interpreter uh, looks at data. So is this uh, like, is it already, was it already executed? Yes, it's identified by this enum variant. If so, so it's, it uh, won't be executed again. Uh, so that's how main uh, like execution function looks like. It do does three things. First one is like prepare context. Internally, it merge previous data and current data. Yes, it's I mean this one it's merge it like as a first step, uh, and then it executes script and the pack result. So it's the last step. Uh, here you can see how uh, merging could be done. So, like our execution graph is is linearized to a trace, uh, and uh, imagine that like previous data was in following form, and current data would be following form. And here you can see that like subtree of pars could be different, and uh, they identified by uh, size of subtree. And while merging, uh, here we just this like imagine that this go from a right subtree and this will be placed after a left subtree uh, and also there are other uh, like uh, other situation it's the most simple one uh, but i think it's uh, too hard to like talk about it um, it's like on this uh, uh, slides because it's really hard to like uh, um, it's really hard to understand, probably, but so it's like the possible um, way how merged, how merging process could look like. Uh, okay, so and uh, we uh, so like uh, we talk about how call executed, but also uh, in general, interpreter tries to like execute all instructions, so cover all. In other words, cover all sub like nodes and all uh, graphs. Yes, uh, and internally it tries to execute all calls. <laughs> but like execution rules are different for different uh, instructions. And for example, uh, like CQ has rules that uh, like write subtree or write subgraph, yes, of CQ could be executed only if left uh, was completed. Like it means that all calls inside the left some graph was executed. For XOR, rules are different. So it means that, <laughs> so here, sorry, the, there is a 
sub three and sub graph, but it should be like uh, it's inconsistent. So here, imagine it's like sub graph. So we write sub graph of XOR executed only if on the left uh, sub graph some instruction failed with a error. So it's like a, a form of cage. And parallel, what does it mean by here by parallel that I wanted to talk about? So here it means that <laughs> uh, all right sub three view executed. Uh, if left doesn't fail. So it means that uh, compared to sequ sequential execution, a uh, right uh, subgraph or sub three, uh, again, it doesn't matter, uh, you executed uh, with left, yes. But the only thing that will uh, break, break this process is if some call on left uh, or some instruction on left sub three was failed, and then why fail you bubble it up uh, to the next XOR instruction. Uh, so here <coughs> is how call is executed. Is executed. Um, actually, there are two situations when, so in, also remember how call looks like. Here is the first argument is a peer ID of, uh, of a node of, or a peer. It's a network that we want to call this, uh, the service in this function. Uh, there are two situations when PID is equal to current not PID where interpreter was one. <coughs> and uh, if it is, then it executed synchronously. I mean that uh, like it executed uh, on on this like node synchronously. If it's not equal, then this PID uh, will add to next PID that will return by the interpreter. So, <clears throat> and uh, like uh, one of the last slides, uh, we have, uh, of course, of course, we implemented most of the thing, I uh, think that uh, we wanted, but uh, also we need to implement uh, uh, dozens of uh, other things. And um, as already said, we do not have caching and uh, signing of results. Uh, also, we are using JSON. <laughs> we want to switch to interface types. Uh, our like uh, ear doesn't have binary presentation now. We are working on it all, uh, either. And uh, uh, getting also JSON pass was our uh, the most uh, huge uh, failure because JSON pass is a really rare <laughs> thing. It uh, there is no any specification of JSON pass, uh, no good libraries. So it's like it's mess. Yes, actually. And you want to get rid and use some uh interface types like uh, accessors and also we want to implement uh, academia uh, routing as an aqua library and uh, some some uh, other things uh, this is so actually there are a lot of them so like <laughs> today uh, i uh, i hope that i review most of the things that uh, we are using aqua stack all of them are open source open source <clears throat> you can find them by the things so I will. Uh, I was uh, like covered marine virtual machine or runtime. Uh, we we <clears throat> haven't renamed it yet. Rust SDK, uh, a common intermediate implementation, and Aqua. So if you have any questions and if you are interested in these technologies, please uh, follow us on Twitter's uh, Twitter. Uh, like you could subscribe our newsletter on our site. And uh, you could reach me uh, by this email or by this Telegram link. So thank you all. Thank you, Jonathan. So that's it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks Thanks for sharing all about Aqua, Aqua Marine, and all the cool stuff you're working on at Fluence. Uh, and uh, staying up super early um, or super late, depending on how your clock works. So extra round of applause uh, for Mike for for delivering that talk. Uh, we yeah. are basically over time, so which is great. Um, lots of stuff. I'm, it sounds like you could have gone on for, for even more. But um, we'll flip over to the Discord. We'll end the, the live stream uh, and look forward to seeing many of you in a future WebAssembly uh, virtual event. And thanks for, thanks for staying up. Thanks for hanging out. And um, talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you.